Hey guys, it's Anders. In today's Logic Pro tutorial, I'm going to show you some quick ways to move around the piano roll and quickly program and edit things in there. Let's get into that. Say my name aloud. Okay, we are back once again inside Logic. So if these videos are helpful for you guys, please subscribe to the channel, bash a like on the video, and if you've got any comments or other videos you would like to see, throw that down below. So what we're gonna to cover today is just some basics of the piano roll and a couple of things we can do that are really helpful for MIDI editing. So the first thing that you can do, if you select a particular track and you've got a loop on like I have here, it will select those particular pieces of MIDI. So you can see it selected these four here and highlighted them in a lighter color of what they originally were. And if we press E, that's gonna bring up our piano roll and it will show us exactly what we've got highlighted here. And we can see those notes. Now, one really useful thing, if you've got different variations, you can click on the little play buttons at the top here and play just that particular part. And you see how it creates a loop just over that MIDI section. And we could click on another one and play that as well. Or we can go back to playing the whole lot. Now if you're working on multiple parts together, if you select both, it will display both in this particular area. If we choose something that's got more information, so perhaps these three channels, we can see that the two layers of information show up in there. So we can actually edit all of these at once. If I were to edit this note here, it would only edit in the relevant MIDI section here. So another really great quick tip that I've shown before is if you are to highlight some MIDI, you can use Shift, Alt, and the up arrow, and that's gonna move you in octaves. So if you'd really quickly wanted to grab some MIDI and move it up and down one octave, you can do that. Another great thing for when you're editing MIDI, you see we've got a huge amount of space up and below of covering all of the other keys and perhaps we don't need that, we just wanna work within the keys and notes we've got here. We have something up here called collapse mode. You can click collapse mode and it will reduce the piano roll to just the notes you're using in this particular instance. So if you've I've got a chord set working for example you just want to work within those chords you can choose collapse mode and it'll give you just these notes so this means we can edit and we know we're not going to go off piste in any way we can just edit and work in the exact notes we've got and it's uh it also works if you have multiple channels selected as well that cover multiple pieces of audio so if we do that we can see the collapse mode has worked there and grabbed just the relevant bits if we grab all of this the collapse mode is grabbing all of those pieces of audio and just limi limiting us to those particular notes. You can turn it off and we're back to this. So collapse mode is super useful for quick MIDI editing and not getting lost in the editor while you're working. Uh, these zoom functions work the same as they do on the transport. So if you hold alt and you're using a magic mouse, you can scroll up and down to go in and out or left and right as so. Um, there are lots of other MIDI functions available. So velocity, for example, is not directly available from here. What we can do is click this little menu up here with these three icons, that is the MIDI draw menu. That will then give us down here our different options for controllers. It will always default to something that may have been recorded in. So at some point this has been played in and there's some data in there already. And you can choose the most common ones that are gonna be around here. Note velocity has some data in it. So you'll notice ones that have data in are highlighted and in bold as well. And we can there see the note velocities and we can edit those individually as well. You can see we've edited that one note and it has changed as well. If we click and drag, we can edit multiple notes in sort of a sliding scale. And if you so wish, you can slide across an entire area as well. Notice that we've got 
two channels selected here and the velocity editor defaults to the channel that is selected rather than the MIDI information. So these notes lay on top of each other. So when we do this slide here, it only adjusts some of the notes. You'll see some are left at their original velocities. The channel you have selected are the ones that get edited in this instance. You can change the key that you're working in inside a track and you can use quantize to key as well. So if we were to take this particular piece of um, MIDI information here and we'll just loop this one particular section. We can change the key and use a quantize value. So if we wanted to put it into G minor, we'll see that it now snaps into G minor. This can be really useful if you've played something on the keyboard and you've maybe hit a missed note. You can simply highlight, choose the key you're supposed to be playing in, quantize and it will quantize it to those values for you. And you've got all of the uh, main keys that you could possibly desire in here and you can change them here. And we just quantize those using the Q value there. So we'll just leave those as they were. You can adjust all velocities at once. If you highlight all and drag down, it will change all the velocities. Or you can drag a single one and adjust the velocity that with the slider just here as well. And there is another way to adjust velocity. If you press T, it brings up your pointer menu here and V. V lets us select a note and we can adjust velocity by dragging up and down here as well. We double tap T, that brings us back to our pointer tool. The quantize values that are set in here are also set within the inspector. You can see those in the region. It currently says quantize off. However, the quantize here is 16 note Q. However, until it's been applied, it will not actually be taking effect. Um, we could put a swing value in here and we should see some changes. There we go. We could then also apply that just the same as we could up here. We could 16 swing E and we get exactly the same adjustments there. So it's also accessible in the MIDI editor if you were looking to add that and you didn't have the inspector open, for example. So you can access that right here. In view up here on the left, we have something called note labels. Now, note labels are quite useful if you need to see a particular value of a note and it's of note velocity. So you can turn that on here and we can see the note is directly labeled as what is being played and the velocity it's being played at. Smaller notes won't display. You need to zoom in and then you can see those like here. In the functions menu, there are a lot of MIDI transform functions. We have fixed velocity, which will set everything to the same velocity. You can do random pitch and random velocity. Um, one that is very useful is humanize. Now, humanize will add slight variances into the timing and velocity and length, if you so wish, to different parts of the audio. So if we were to click operate here, we see it's just moved very, very small amounts and it gives more of a human feel. If we undo it, you'll see the changes. That's one that's very good to use. If you're unable to play your MIDI in and you have to program it, it can add more of a feel that it has been played by an individual. And if you have multiple notes that you want it to be the same length, so to do that, we can hit Command A and select all of the audio. If you then do Alt and Shift, and once we start to drag, all notes will now be snapped to that same length. You see that? And if we just do Command and Z, we can undo that. You can see we've got the longer notes back there. That's a nice easy way to just get all of the note lengths to be exactly the same, if that's what you needed at any point. And those are just some quick tips and a quick introduction to the piano roll. We'll go more in depth with some of the other features in later videos. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If it was, please bash a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next video.